So with the release of our new three-phase distribution board, here at the Skolmall Group and us as a technical team, we thought it was a great idea to revisit safe isolation. We've just been talking about safe isolation in September, but we need to remember as electricians, this isn't just for September. And it's one of them very important processes we undertake before we do electrical work. So myself and Neil, we're going to work through the electrical safety first best practice guide number two. And we're going to look at their flowchart and we're going to break down each section of that flowchart as we go through the video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head to stage number one. Neil, who are you talking to over there? Well, Marcus, step one, safe isolation guidance note two. Need to seek permission. Can we safely isolate the power? First question we need to ask is, is anybody working and using the power? Can we isolate now or do we have to come back? Stage two, will we damage any equipment by just turning the power off? And step three, is it needed for a safety service? Step number two, now we're looking at locating the circuit device or the point of isolation. So in the area I'm working, I've come looking for a distribution board or a consumer unit, which we have right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the door. I'm just going to have a look at the points of isolation we have. Now, with any luck, they might be labelled individually. So let's say I'm working on a first floor mezzanine socket circuit. Then I might be looking for something indicating first floor mezzanine sockets. Now, it's quite common, especially within a three-phase distribution board, that we don't have any labelling on the board itself. So what we might need to do is actually look at the schedule of circuit details for the installation. Now, that's going to give me things such as type of wiring, cross-sectional area of conductors. However, what I'm looking for at this point is I'm looking at the circuit designation. So I'm looking at a name that I can allocate to one of these ways to point me in the right direction of actually isolating the correct device in the future steps we're going to take. Step three, check your approved voltage indicator to GS38. So let's check the exposed tips. Let's check the lead for any damage. No cracks to the body. Proving unit, no cracks, no damage. Okay, we're safe to progress. And let's check the voltage indicator actually worked. The step four, it's me again. So. Now's the time we're going to check that our proving unit actually works. And we can test this on a known supply or if it's got a built-in function. But our favourite way of testing it is actually to use our proving unit. So now, Marcus, we're going to test this on the proving unit that all the lights light up on both devices to show that it's working correctly. And we're now safe to progress on to the next step. And that's over to you, Marcus. Step number five. This is a point on where we actually get to isolate the device we identified previously in a different step. Now, before I go and isolate this device, one big thing is we need to consult with BS7671 and actually check that our chosen point of isolation can be used as an isolator. Now, this could be an MCB. It could be an AFDD, an RCBO. It could also be a rotary isolator. As long as the point we're using as isolation has been checked within BS7671, then at this stage we can go ahead and we can isolate the supply we still believe it to be. Stage six, Marcus. We've identified the circuit we want to isolate. We've checked it with the proving unit working and it meets GS38. So now we need to select the right lock off device. So we're selecting the lock off device. We've got a padlock and a key. And what's really important is we have a sign. It quite clearly says, do not operate. So now we're on to step seven. So this is the part where we have to look at testing the equipment or the area we're working in to prove that it is in fact dead and we've isolated the correct circuit. Now, this is broken down into two sections on the flowchart, one being single phase, one being three phase. And there's slight differences to how we have to test the different installations we have. We're going to start here with a single phase installation. And we're going to test between our three conductors being line, earth and neutral. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go forward with what we would class as best practice. And that is probing onto the least dangerous conductor first, being in this case on the earth bar. And then we're going to go on to the line. So when we go on to the line, we should see no voltage. If we see voltage at this point, it's a good indication that we haven't in fact isolated the correct circuit. But we have no voltage. So we're going to come off the most dangerous first and then off the least dangerous. The reason being... What could happen is if we probe onto the most dangerous and we haven't in fact isolated the supply with this tip, this tip, which isn't connected to anything, could become live and then we have a dangerous situation. I'm then going to go between my earth and my neutral 
Again, seeing no voltage off of the neutral, off of my earth bar. And then I've got to go between line and neutral. Neutral being the least dangerous, line being the most. So I'm going to follow that order as always. No voltage again, come off of the line, off of the neutral. Now, as far as we know, we've actually proved that dead. However, we do have to look for a later step before we can fully confirm that this supply is dead. So we still need to proceed with caution. So now we're moving on to three phase. Now, slightly differs because we have more conductors, therefore we have more steps at this point we need to undertake for our testing arrangement. We're proceeding with caution, although we've isolated the supply externally, we don't know yet this is dead. So we're gonna take off our protective shield so we can access the incoming supply. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our earth to our phase conductor. So earth to L1, earth to L2, and earth to L3. And at this point, it's good to know if you receive any readings on them, that it gives us an idea we haven't maybe correctly isolated where we need to. So once we've done that, we're then gonna go between our neutral and our phase conductors. So neutral L1, neutral L2, and neutral L3. Again, this is giving us a good idea now we've not received any voltage that we have in fact isolated it, but we don't know that until we've finished the full safe isolation process. We're then gonna go between our earth and neutral. And again, we receive no voltage. And then last but not least, we need to go between our phase conductors. So we're gonna test between L1 and L2. Now, that's where we would receive our 400 volts, which is what we would be looking for between these if in fact it was live. However, we've already proved between our phases and our phases and neutral, which gives us a good indication that it is in fact dead. However, we do not know yet. So we go between L1 and L2, L1 and L3, and then L2 and L3 giving us our 10 steps into testing a three phase installation. We're now gonna move on to the next part of the flowchart to finally complete safe isolation and identify this supply as in fact dead. So Marcus, now we've come to a crucial bit to recheck that our device is still working. We've checked all the line conductors to make sure they're not got any supply. And now what I'm gonna do is check that my unit is still working and it's not come faulty in between. So I'm happy with that. So we tested before the proving unit work. We then tested the circuits in the supply. And now we've just proved again that this is working through safe isolation. So there we have it. There's the safe isolation procedure based on the flowchart from the Electrical Safety First Best Practice Guide number two. And as you can see by the video, it does not take an incredible amount of time to safely isolate correctly. Me and Neil really hope you've enjoyed this video and it's helped to raise awareness within the industry on safe isolation. Remembering, even though we have a great campaign in September, it's not just for September, it's for all year round. Like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And as always with Skullmore, stay safe and isolate.